I love it every time, and I'm not afraid to say it. Me Welcome neither. back to Hobby Think Tank, episode 111. I am Danny, joined by Mike. What's going on? Episode 111, is it really? No, I just make up numbers uh, every time. I I'll say I have no idea what episode it is. but Oh, no I, no idea, but I, I want people going back and looking in the archives for the other 110. So, Yeah, we do, we do this every week, Hobby Think every Tank. Week. And we don't uh, charge. This is this is free of charge. It is. Um, wouldn't mind a little like, maybe a little subscribe to the channel if you're watching. But other than that, that's the only thing you have to do. That doesn't seem hard. Yep, I agree. So I'm I'm excited for today because you have been doing something in some of your content where you've been talking about player runs and examining uh, different player career cards. If, if people aren't familiar with the player run. It, it's a card from basically every year that they played in the majors is the short of it. And we'll talk in more detail, but it got me thinking there's different ways to organize your cards, organize the way you collect your cards, um, different ways to collect that you maybe you haven't thought of. Maybe you're in a rut. Um, I think both of us have had collecting ruts from time to time, and it's fun to have a new approach. Um, and so I think one of the things we want to kind of think tank today is different. <laughs> And, uh, you know, different ways that we both like to approach collecting, organizing, um, the combination of the two. And, uh, you know, I'll start right right off with with the player runs is one of my favorites. Um, I've collected the Sandy Koufax run um, from his uh, rookie card over one shoulder to the rest over there. And... Uh, you know, I'm get I'm getting an absolute blast out of doing it. I'm picking my next player, and that is at one very long intro. Uh, what, what do you What do you like about the player run aspect of just going after a, a certain guy? Uh, I want you to talk more about the PSA registry because you're certainly f far more advanced than I am. But I like the PSA registry that I have a finite list that I can check off. Um, I don't have to worry about. Deciding whether or not the 63 Fleer is part of the base collection for Sandy Koufax. You know, the PSA registry has it has it on there. So I included it in my collection. Right. Um, I, I, I like knowing that I, I have a beginning and an end. If I just say I want to collect all my favorite players, well, that's kind of an ongoing thing, you know, maybe forever. Um, but if I know I want to collect a, a specific set of cards, I really enjoy that feeling. We, you know, you're, you're bringing up maybe a collecting style, right? And yeah. then there's, well, then how do you store it? And I think those have been issues that collectors have dealt with since there have been collectors. It is as, a problem as old as time. How do you store your stuff? What's the methodology that you use? And I think for every type of collection that exists, there's a different type of a way to store it. You could be as creative as you want to be. I, and everybody's brain works a little bit differently, right? So I'm more, I'm a math guy, right? So I sort by year and I think that sequential methodology makes a lot of sense. So if I want to pull all my Kofax cards, I got to go to 1955 and then 1956 and 1957. See, that blows me away. In a good way or? <laughs> I, I guess in a, in a shocking way. Okay. Um, I thought you would be more of an alphabetical guy. And, okay, I'll take it even a step further. Within the year of cards, so then it's alphabetical by, so let's take 63. If right. I have a 63 FLIR cards, those are all before the tops cards, and then they're numeric within that set. So 1963 tops card number one is the first tops card right after all of any FLIRs or Kellogg's or any you know anything with a different, they're, they're alphabetical by, uh, manufacturer numerical by set. So it's, but what that does for me, that system allows me shockingly to find stuff very quickly. It sounds maybe annoying to your brain. Cause you're like, well, just keep all the Kofax. Cause if you need the Kofaxes, then you, you know, they're all together or whatever, or whatever player by alphabetical. But for me, maybe you would go alphabetical, like you would maybe store it alphabetical, then sequentially by year, probably? A hundred percent. But you raised another good point, and you made me, and this is why we think tank it. 
I bet I do it differently. Uh, the more I think about it for superstar or star players that I've done a run for than maybe my other more common cards. Okay. Those I think I do. You're, you're right. My system is more year. Okay. And, so, and don't you think each collector would define what a superstar is to them differently? Like a hundred percent. That's what, that's why I was talking about the player runs. That's right. one of the things for me that I kind of separate. So that, right. that for me is something I actually like to store on display. Right. That's not something that ends up in a box or a drawer for me. Okay. Um, but that's, that's me. Yeah. And, and that's the way I like to do it. The last thing anybody needs to hear from anyone else is there's only one way to do it. That's, that's the biggest BS I've ever heard. My, what I would tell people in where I have really gotten a lot of value out of watching different hobbyists on YouTube or Instagram or wherever is that I get a lot of really good ideas that I try in terms of storage, organizing, uh, categorizing my collection that sometimes turn into ideas I use. Sometimes I go, you know, that's cool that they do it that way, but I could never do it that way. It's, I just want to see all the, like, I don't know everything and therefore I want to learn and be uh, intrigued by how different people might do different things. Um, so yeah, I'm a, like a player run for me takes a while. There you go. So this would probably be one of the ways I would suggest you can organize your cards. And this is pretty much right. Got to have one of these around. The Bible. You need to have every vintage collector should have one of these. And you can buy them maybe used here. on Amazon. They are expensive, yeah. so you can buy them used. Super cheap, ten bucks or whatever, maybe. Yeah, uh, it's a um, great reference. But they also organize them the way you said. So I'm, 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 I'm thinking. You've got me thinking now. That is, is that kind of the standard? Um. And I think we need to give a shout out to Jefferson Burdick, not to not to not to geek out on this, but um, if you want to say he, I call him the inventor of the of the sports card uh, card catalog system. I mean, he literally defined the the, the, the letters, the numbers, the uh, the organizational system for for pretty much everything pre war. Do I have that correct? You do. And I think uh, in this episode, he deserves the shout out for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, then there's logic too, right? There's there's some system, and but some people again just would would work that out differently in their brain. I've had friends that do it by player, and they ask me, "How do you do it?" And I tell them, and then they they change how they do it, and they're like, "I just can't get used to this." Or what? Great, do whatever makes sense for you, um, but it, it just I want to be able to get my hand on a card quickly, and so for me, it's. If I need a Kofac, now granted, I need to know a card number, right? Um, but that's easy to look up real quick, either there or I just go on eBay and I'll type in 1960 tops. Right. <laughs> and one of the listings will have the bloody card number and then I go find it, pull it and whatever. Um, and so I think also I think the more, the larger your collection is, first of all, everybody needs a system, but it gets even more my dogs i'm so sorry Guys. your dog doesn't your dog has an opinion on your organizational system she does she is come here why don't you just come up here and say hello no stop being silly um you need to have a system and the larger your collection against the more more imperative that system needs to be in terms of tightening it up like if your collection fits in one shoe box who gives a crap how you organize right. them you know, um, you, you can sort through a shoebox in about 10 minutes and find a card that, oh, where did I put my XYZ trout or whatever? You know, it'll be there. You only have one shoebox to go through. The bigger it gets, the I, you've, you've been to my house, Danny. You've seen this room in person. If I didn't keep things in a system that made sense to me, it would be I would never be able to find anything. So two questions. Sure. When you go to a card show, do you want the dealers to organize their cards if they're let's say they're in boxes, not 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 display right. Um, I think that would be a different organizational system 
than what I like to maybe do personally, because that I think should be team or player. I think either I, I can deal with either. I prefer by year. Really on us on, 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 on singles boxes as well. Yeah. Cause my cards are listed on my want list by year first. And so that would just be the easiest way for me to, but if you know, but let's say you're chasing a guy like Beltre, who I know that you were, were looking at for the Hall of Fame. Right. You have all of Adrian Beltre's cards now, to, and there's thousands of them probably. Well, I have I have the ones I want to have. I have some rookies. I have some autographs. I have um, his last card, just stuff that fits registries for me. But I don't have all of his cards, and I certainly sure. don't have them all slabbed. But are so, you going off the PSA registry for that, or are you um, going by year when you shop at a show or eBay? So that's or? different. I'm not trying to do his run, you know? So it's more, you know, that's the other thing. If you just go, hey, I, I like this guy. I want to have a few key cards from his career. Yeah. Um, you might pick a year he won the MVP or went to the World Series or won the Cy Young, you know, if it's a pitcher. So <laughs> it can be so many different ways to do it i just don't need his run i'm not chasing his run i'm not chasing my player runs are all hall of famers and therefore most of them are vintage but i don't do modern hall of fame runs like if it's past 1989 unless it's their rookie or their last card i have very little interest in it i don't need a sixth year jim tomey card you know, for example. No, but for Bill Trey, and I only bring him up because he was a hometown guy to you. I, I'm yeah. trying to pick somebody who might be the most casual, you know, type of collection for you. Um, did you literally list which Bell Trey cards you wanted? Or no. you, if you see one and it hits you? Or yes. do you? Okay. And yeah. then you file it by year and by set, not by Bell Trey. That's right. That's right. Now, my autographs, like all of my loose autographs, just. Um, all together, those are alphabetical because I don't have them. Only my slabs are year, set, card number sorted. Alphabetical for, but if I'm doing a, if I have a bunch of random, let's say I've opened a bunch of boxes of 2013 tops or 2023 tops. I mean, those, I would sort those by card number and put them in a box or whatever. And they just go into the black abyss. But my mm -hmm. autographs are done alphabetically. I like with the when we think like this. Yeah, because it's there's so many ways. Um, Do you have anything that you like to display on cards, or does everything get put away? Everything I know gets you have a lot of memorabilia. Away. Yeah, everything gets put away because I have enough posters and signed bats and framed press steels and bobbleheads and stuff to cover every inch of space that is available in my room. Do I love the, the slab displays? I really do. Uh, I actually like, I like the Pinzoni cases. They're great. You know, yep. uh, I really, I don't, what I don't like is they typically, and I get why, but holding 30 to 50 cards, depending on the size that you buy, feels very limiting to me. But again, I also have a bigger collection than most, like my collection is, Bigger than most. And I'm not, that's not a braggart thing. It's just a reality for me. If I cared only if I wanted to put all my glue Garrett cards in a display case, that would be cool, but I have no room for it. I, I love people that do that. I love seeing what they, what's important enough to them to go in the display case, you know, what matters. And I love hearing when people switch that out. I guess I do kind of have that with the, with the Berg back here, you know? Yeah. Cause that's a display case and it can hold 150 cards, which is a lot. So what's in it? Uh, my entire, well, not my entire, I have too many now, but my tops five star hall of famers. So okay, I have about 175 of them and I got 150 in there, but they're sorted by year and then alphabetical. So all my 2012s are for, you know, they go together by alphabetical by last name. And then 2013, 2014, et cetera. And you also keep a spreadsheet, though. So if you need to find your stuff, you know what you own. 100%. Which is but, the key part of your system. Because, like, if you wanted to find your Adrian Beltre cards and it's not a registry. I could do it very quickly. 
And that so takes time, coaches. you know, but that time is so worth it because it's, it's a, it's fun for me doing that. I love the organizational flash, uh, cataloging part of collecting to me that scratches an itch for my brain that I think a lot of us are probably like that. That's why we like to collect things, the completionist aspect of it, the, the, wow. And the last thing I want to do, I don't like having dupes of cards and I've done, if I don't keep a good checklist system, whether it's the app on like, if I'm in a show and I need, Oh, do I need this Jim Cott card? Well, I'm going to my set registry app. I can type in cot and see all the cot cards. They're sorted by year. And if I see a 71 tops, I can go, oh, do I have the 71? And I can look real quick. So for me, and so I keep that current, I keep VCP current, and I keep my spreadsheet current. So there's three different places where I'm entering every card that comes through the door in order to make sure I can see it. I would say that's unique. <laughs> and probably a little bit dumb or OCD or... It's something, um, but it's, <laughs> it's something. It, it, but it's also probably more effective than than any other system. But I mean, most people are not going to do that. Well, I think people are intimidated by the time that it takes. Yeah, and I would agree. If if I had no system today and I was starting it from scratch, it would be incredibly overwhelming and not doable. But just like our mom told us when we were kids. If you once you get it clean and keep it clean, it's a lot easier to keep it clean than to get it dirty and clean it all up again, right? Yep. So for me, the meticulousness of making sure that when a card comes to the door, it's put through this little gauntlet of things that I do to a card, scanning it, putting it in all these different places is a therapeutic, B satisfying. And see, not a big deal. One card, you know, I got a slab today. You know, it'll take me three minutes total per card. Now, if, again, that's no big deal. I got three cards in the mail today. Not a big deal. If I had to do it starting from scratch, it would be, forget that. So, And I think know. that's where a lot of people are who might be watching. So I just want to be fair to that point. Of what? Which point? That people who are watching this video are probably not starting out from scratch yes they probably have a system we right? hope I, uh, I yeah hopefully and if you don't and you're starting out from scratch and you have a ton of cards i mean in all seriousness start start by big categories just start by dividing by sport right <laughs> you know i mean i'm serious and, and then start working into subcategories because then if nothing else you can put you know your football in one box while you organize your baseball or whatever, whatever it is. And if you just collect baseball, then just break it up by year. Like, like Mike said, or break it up by player, if you want to do it that way. Um, and I think that it is true that we do slabs and raw differently. They just, I, I don't know why. I, I think that's pretty common too, right? Yeah. But you're making a good point. If, if you have a system, it, it's okay to evaluate that system and it, and think, is there a better way I could be doing this? Uh, I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you just think you've created the perfect system. I Again, as long as I've been doing this, I still go, ooh, I'm going to do it. That's a good idea. You know? Um, so, yeah, but you got to have one. Otherwise, how do you find anything? Yeah. Anyway. So what do, what's your... Do, how do you store your slabs? So I, a couple different things, notes I made. I use the PSA registry and inventory tools. Um, for me, uh, the ability to scan in a slab is, is very, very appealing versus entering it onto a spreadsheet. I, I like just have scanning it. It's in there. It's done. I can find it. Yeah. Um, I also separate cards that I'm keeping and I store one way versus cards that I might sell or take to a show. Okay. And, and, and I thought that was an important thing because I think a lot of people fund part of their hobby out of their own collection. And, you know, it's probably a good thing to draw a line and say what is personal and what is for sale. Um, That's a great point. Great point. And then the, the other thing I, that I was going to bring up is uh, you mentioned a couple uh 
VCP. Um, there's Trading Card Database. L look for different sites out there that help you with all this. You can print out checklists. You can you can put in your cards in in, in the database. And I I just think those deserve uh, definitely worth checking out if you've never done it. And the once you there's a lot to this, and I want people to hear this. Once you do it, it's done. Yeah. Like especially if it's on the web, you know, if it's on the cloud, once you've put that, you don't have to do it. It's maybe people don't realize you don't have to do this all the time. You get the card in your, in your, and it can take a while Bite off little chunks. Hey, I'm going to do this road today, or I'm going to, you know, sit down and I'm going to give an hour to this and I'll do as many cards as I can do in the next hour, a time horizon or a, or a small goal to eventually work your way through your entire collection don't feel like, oh, I've got to have all this done now or it's a failure. That's, uh, I think people get, again, overwhelmed with that idea. I'm going to be here for days. Well, maybe, you know, when I did VCP the first time and I finally created my inventory in VCP, I think it was 2,500 slabs I put in over the course of multiple weeks. You know, I'd, right. I'd grab a stack and I'd sit down and I'd start putting them in. But I knew once that card was in, I'm, I was good. You know, it was always there and it, I only built on it in terms of that. I do love your delineation between cards you're going to PC cards and, and potentially movable cards. Uh, that's probably really smart um, to do that, at least at a base level, right? And 30,000 foot view level. When you, we were talking about player runs, you know, there's also people that love to do, you know, another way to, if you, I like player, or I really like a certain set, you know, maybe you go collect your favorite team of that set. There's people that do that. I know, and I love this idea is a franchise that you fall. You might, you would do the Orioles, for example, I want to get every Orioles card that tops has ever made or whatever, and create a master team set. You know, those kinds of ideas are brilliant and fun projects. You know, if that's your jam, then go do that. If, if you like, 54 tops and you want to eat you can do either the full set you can do a few teams I, if orioles move to baltimore in 54 there's the 54 orioles team set there you go that and was, that, that was, was probably a fun project for you hunting down those cards right and finding the right grades and oh and, and there's and there wasn't one good player so i mean it really <laughs> worked fun because it wasn't it wasn't expensive compared to you know thank god i'm not a yankee fan you that's, know that's true and it's you know some people will say on a slab run like that, whether it's a player run or a team run or whatever, they'll say, well, I, minimum grade of X. And I always, I don't know. It's not a criticism. It's fine if you want to do that, but I felt like it was limiting. You were limiting yourself. Why, why are you limiting yourself? If you find a, I've seen fives that look better than eights, you know? So it's like, wait a second, especially on vintage, right? The, it can be all over the map the numerical grade is almost irrelevant because you're going to get certain things obviously with certain grades, but at the same time to limit yourself to, I only want X or better. And I, that's a realization that I've come to just really over the last two or three years. And that was driven by the market, by my ability. I, like, hey, you know what? Maybe I don't need a seven in this Bill Necro card that I want. I'll take a five, you know, it's okay. Because well, for, for a knuckleball, it's a moving target anyway. Touche. I will say this, this is funny because when I was a kid, when I first got into cards, I would open packs and I would sort them simply by team. You know, all my blue Jays would be together and my red Sox would be together and Rangers and whatever. Uh, and they would be all rubber banded together and thrown in a shoebox. you know? Uh, so I sorted by team initially, and uh, I guess I grew out of that. <laughs> so well, that have... Guys change teams less. I think that has something to do with it. Okay. Yeah, guys were – free agency wasn't like free it is now. It hard, I think harder to do it by teams. And as we're talking about it, I think I see less people do team organization than they used to. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. But when you see it and it's done right, it's pretty cool. Oh, that's uh, ridiculous. Um, pretty cool. That was one of my favorite projects. So I'm so glad you brought that up, doing the teams. You know, you don't have to do 
uh, one million cards, you know, for your team to 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 make it fun. Um, you know, like you said, pick a year, pick a bunch of years. Uh, I one of the, one of the things I love doing is taking my kids' birth years um, and and doing it with them, um, and that's a cool thing. That was one of my first big projects was get every tops set from seventy three to current. You know, uh, from my birth year, and that's crazy fun because you're like, this is my lifetime of cards, right? And there, there's there's some, I don't know cool factor to just that relational thing between cards and how long I've been. This is, these are the cards that have all been around as long as I have, you know, <laughs> that's, that's kind of neat. Um, so that's, a, you know, like you said, you could go get your favorite team in the year you were born, or there's just, again, so many ways to, to cross pollinate collections. Right. And let me ask you this. If you're doing yeah. a, a run, let's say you were doing, 56 tops Dodgers and you're a Kofax guy, would you have one 56 Kofax that goes into both slots, so to speak, or would you buy two different Kofaxes? You're talking one. about for the different packs? Uh, well, let's assume it's a year. Let's take 57 that doesn't have different packs. Okay. Or whatever. Would I have to own two Kofaxes for each yeah. one? Yes. <sighs> if I'm being completely honest, if I had the money, yes. Yes. Um, however, in the, my my reality, I'm probably owning one. Right. <laughs> you know, and I'm probably owning in the best grade that I want to buy. You know what? Some people may not know, and this will be a good finishing point. Even if you're not a registry person, you, you don't have to be a registry person to have your inventory of slabs, at least PSA slabs, on the PSA database. Yep. Again, my... My hope and dream is that somebody smarter than me comes up with the universal database at some point for slabs. But until that day, if you have a PSA collection of any of any sort, put your inventory in there. Because when you click on a card, actually, I can show that. Can I show how this works? This is, yeah, I, I think it's also a good time to announce that we have started a super pack for a universal registry. If you want to make political donations, we're starting <laughs> our own party, uh, yeah, the universal registry party. That's where we great... actually will literally bring everybody together. Um, that should be an article on Hobby News Daily. It should be. In fact, I think, Mike, uh, you offered to write that, didn't you? Oh, I did. Yeah, I guess I should get on that. I'm kind of behind on things. Uh, I'm trying to pull up my registry because if you click on any given card and mine's giving me the error, unfortunately, you're... So of course, it doesn't work right now, but... You click on a card and you scroll down, it'll give you pop reports and, yep. you know, auction prices realized, APR, all that fun stuff. But it'll also tell you all the different sets that that card would fit in. And it'll give you a laundry list of them. And what's cool about that is through that, I've discovered, oh, there's a set for that? How cool. And I can go get the checklist yeah. for that and look at it. Oh, yeah, I want to do that project. That looks fun, you know. I get excited when it turns out I have three cards in the set already. Right. Yes, even better. Wait, that I didn't know it existed, and I have three out of the three thirteen hundred cards. I'm ready to go. <laughs> right. I'm I'm already one percent of the way there. You know, but I will say there are things like Greg Maddox. I I'm pointing over here like anybody can see. Um, I have the Greg Maddox rookie PSA registry. It's like four cards. Right. You know, th these aren't expensive. I I got to watch him pitch. I work for the Braves. He is important to me. That yeah. was a great project of a couple cards. Even though he's on the Cubs and all those cards. But what are you going to do? Yes, even though he's on the Cubs and all those cards. I was hoping we, you would overlook that. But, no. <laughs> but yeah, um, you could do yeah. Griffey rookies. You could do, you great. know, and there's there's a lot of those. And you can do a basic or a full. And, and there's just so many ways to do it. Uh, you, you gotta obviously if you're in cards you like cards if you're watching this show you like cards i hope uh just be open-minded go find cool stuff to do there's plenty plenty of ways to skin the cat with collecting and I story think, i was about to say i think the bottom line is we both come from a perspective of we're in this because we enjoy it and so wh wh however you want to enjoy it is the correct answer just keep it organized that way yeah <laughs> you'll enjoy it more that's i think that's what we're trying to say 
totally true. When you can put your hand on a card that you want to show off or put in a video or snap a picture and stick on Instagram, the less time that takes you, probably the, the less aggravated you would be. So, yes, no doubt. Well, awesome, man. That this was, fun. was fun. Thank you. Oh, no. Thank you. And right. thank you guys for, uh, I don't know how long we've been doing this now, but. Well, this, this is episode 111. Our sponsors are <laughs> Blockbuster Video and uh, Heckinger Construction, um, both of which uh, are no longer around. So, Well, they're missing out. That's why the yeah. checks keep bouncing, isn't it? Well, my friend, thank you. And uh, I, I'm not sure who's on next week, but it'll be dynamic, I promise. All right. We'll see you guys later. Keep collecting. See you.